the last day. Afternoon, still evening, morning, where, where are we? What day is today? Thursday. It's been a busy week. Uh, really happy to be here. Always happy to be back in this building. And some very friendly, familiar faces around. So some of you have heard me spout on and on and on and ramble and do these uh, Jackson Pollock style uh, speeches that I like to like to give. I'm not going to give that to you today. I'm just going to make a few remarks. I mean, you guys are out there doing the work. You guys are talking about it. There's great electricity in the room. This is really important. Uh, I just want to make a couple of quick observations uh, here. Standing here in South Belfast, a little bit about the geography and some of the things that are going on, literally a stone's throw away from where we're standing right now. Um, Mark raised a good point, and I'm going to embarrass Glenda as well a little bit here. Uh, Mark talks about um, connectivity, and he actually undersold Weaver's Court a little bit there. Weaver's Court right now is the only office park in Europe, as far as I'm aware, that has a 10 gig hookup in every office in that office park. Okay? The only one in Europe. That won't be forever. People will cop on and catch on. There'll be other places in Belfast. There'll be other places in Northern Ireland. There'll be other places that are on the island of Ireland that benefit from Project Kelvin's fiber optic infrastructure. But for right now, um, Weaver's Court Park has a 10 gig hookup for every office suite in there. Okay, um, are, there are there any techies in the room? Uh, you know, there's somebody that would want to try and conceptualize that for folks. But what this means is that you have, you have post-production companies, movie production, film, television production companies, you have digital imaging companies, you have others that can sit there and in real time edit with their colleagues in San Jose, uh, world-leading entertainment, world-leading documentary films, medical imagery, whatever you want to do right now. This doesn't happen anywhere else, okay? So that's there, all right? Um, if I throw it this way, Queen's University right now, just two things I want to point out. You've got some of the world-leading cybersecurity uh, research going on in that building just over there right now. And I'm not just make throwing world-leading around, this is true, okay? They are developing algorithms, they're developing formulas there, they're doing things that aren't being done elsewhere, okay? London is very interested, Washington is very interested, major corporations from all over are working and co-funding Major universities, Georgia Tech and others in the U.S., are working directly with things going on uh, here at Queens right now. You also have world-leading uh, research uh, in cystic fibrosis. It's being partly supported by the U.S.-Ireland R&D Partnership, which is an all-island and transatlantic research and development partnership. You're having world-leading cancer research being done. I mean, you guys have heard all these different things before, okay? But the point is, the reason why I'm bringing this up is that it's happening. Okay, it's not theoretical, it's not a strategy to develop a world-leading center of excellence in terms of cybersecurity. It's not a strategy to get fiber in the ground, to get businesses. This has already happened, guys, okay? It's already happening, it's already out there. And the question is, do we recognize it and we take advantage of it, okay? We're talking about commercialization of that research. Things are happening all over the city, not just here in South Belfast, but all over the city where this world-leading research is being commercialized and these companies are making money in a very difficult global economic environment, okay? At the community level, things are happening, okay? Has anybody asked, Glenn, has anybody asked you today about your after-school reading program in San Diego Community Center? At some point, talk to her about that. People are talking about government funding getting cut, all these other things happening. Well, if I recall correctly, folks in San Diego saw, look, we have an after-school program that's gonna go away because we're losing, we're losing our funding, all right? There's a teaching college over there called Strand Ellis that is producing how many teachers um, a year, many of whom may not have a direct slot coming in, but they all need experience, they all need real life experience working with kids, and many of kids that have serious troubles at home, serious learning difficulties and everything else. Okay, working with an organization volunteer now, we said let's just bring these people together. We have a need, we have two sets of needs, okay? And we're not talking about getting government funding for this, we don't need it, we've got the people that already exist, we need the kids that need help after school. We've got the people that can provide that help and get experience for their CV, okay? You get an organization in the middle, greetings, welcome, and here you go, you've got an after-school reading program. Did I, over, I oversimplified it, but is that broadly the, broadly the case? Okay, so you've got kids in Sandy Row right now who would not have had access to after-school reading program. After-school reading program is not just about literacy and numeracy, it's keeping these kids in a supportive environment as well, where they have the opportunity, whether it's a free from uh, maybe tough situations at home if there's substance abuse or other kinds of things going on there. It's free from bullying on the streets. It gives them role models, people that they meet from different communities. It exposes them to people from other communities. Okay, and again, this isn't a theoretical program that's being put forth to OFM, DFM, 
for, or being put forth to the assembly for a, a committee to stare at and look at and say, oh, this might be a good idea, let's put that in next year's budget, okay? This is something that's actually happening on the ground. Kids are benefiting, trainee teachers are benefiting, and this is a real world thing, okay? So, you know, from my perspective across the, uh, from across the Atlantic, when I come to South Belfast, I don't see what, you know, uh, you know, theoretical propositions about how we can, I see things actually happening on the ground. And you know what? Less than a, a, a stone's throw away here, you're going to have some of the top songwriters in the world here in Belfast giving concerts at the Belfast National Music uh, Songwriters Festival and also teaching people how to make money out of their music. This city is blessed with more top-notch musicians per capita than anywhere else in the world. And you've got folks like Nancy Griffith, like John Oates from Hall from Oates, like Nick Lowe, everybody coming here to spend a week, not just playing gigs and getting paid for it, but to spend time on the craft of songwriting. And what does that involve? It's not, you know, getting inspired. I mean, I, I've written some songs that I've never seen the light of day oh. as well. Oh, you your breath, your breath can sing. Oh, he, he, he can, absolutely. <laughs> By the way, I wrote a song about no. <laughs> oh. This is about you are creating intellectual property. Intellectual property is worth something. It's only worth something if you know how to protect it and promote it. So what they're talking about there is not just, you know, you know, my, my, my girlfriend left me, my dog left me, my truck broke down, <laughs> you know, and those kinds of, what they're talking about is that we're going to make money out of this, by the way, and guess what, Glen, local musicians are in the States right now, Ben Glover is recording another album right now in Nashville, working with some of the top musicians in the U.S., guys like Gareth Dunlop, Aaron Shan Shanley, Eileen Patterson, Anthony Toner, fa fantastic guy from Corian, you know, is, is based here doing great things, you know, and they're protecting their intellectual property, they are selling their music, they are writing songs for US TV shows, by the way, where some of these TV shows are being filmed and produced here now, and post-production work is being done because you have the fiber optic capability, see how it all comes around, okay, and we're not talking about, you know, theoretical things. So I'm going to put another plug in for the Belfast Nashville um, uh, Songwriters Festival, it's happening right here, the Empire, Madison's Hotel, all these places right down the road. You're going to go in and see people, the people who used to pack stadiums to see. People like Bob DePiro have written 40 number one hits. Is going to be there performing his songs and sharing his music with other people. Okay? That's happening here. It's not, it's not in for decal funding. It's nothing like that. These things are going on. So everybody, we need to just recognize these things that are happening. Encourage people to get out there and participate in that. And when I talk to folks that are coming from the States, when I talk to companies, that are coming in, and they are still coming in. Chicago Mercantile Exchange is coming in. Okay, they're setting up a center here in Belfast, one of the biggest companies, you know, one of the most important financial services companies in the world. Now, I'm not just talking about financial services, though. Real things are happening on the ground. People with university degrees, people with no degrees, people with higher education, further education, people coming straight out of out of high school. There are industries that are developing here right now in clusters. We talk about creative industries, uh, broadly speaking. These things are happening. So. If we can be helpful, I always say this, if we can be helpful helping you find out some of these things, we have the benefit of getting out, I'm out every day, all day, traveling all around Northern Ireland, uh, seeing these things happen. But I always come back, I live here in South, Bel South Belfast, so I see it on my own doorstep, happening here in a density that you don't see happening anywhere else, okay? We've got the advantages, we've got the universities, you've got the hospitals, you've got the business districts, you've got the entertainment districts, you've got all of these other things going on here. And it's a, it's a great advantage. So if we can ever be helpful from our perspective to help shine some lights on some of these things, um, we're always happy to do it. And uh, it's just, again, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. I won't bore you any longer. But, um, you know, I get excited. I love seeing electricity in the room. I love seeing people discussing the hard, real choices that need to be made on the ground to keep this place moving forward. So it's been a pleasure for me to be here for a very short period of time, and I apologize about that today, but I just want to encourage everybody, keep the discussion going, break some crockery, throw stuff around, do whatever you need to do, but be seen also while you're out there. Please be seen, okay? I know anybody who's been attending, the, you know, beginning of Lent, this now we're talking about, you know, giving alms in secret, we're talking about doing all those kinds of things. Okay, that's, that's all well and good, but maybe somehow slip a note around so people still know that you're out there doing it that you're out there taking care of companies, that you're investing in yourselves. Okay, people need to see this because they're gonna learn by your example and they're gonna to wanna to follow your example. So, uh, enough of my sermonizing for the moment, but I just wanna encourage everybody and, uh, and see if there's any way that we can be of any help. Our, our door is always open and I hope that you guys know that 
and hopefully uh, we've been responsive to you when we've had the opportunity. So thanks very much. Sorry. Thank you.